everybody. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Toyota, Captiva Spine, Foundation Risk Partners, and USA Triathlon. Our next guest, Lizzie Nitre, joins us. How are you? I'm great. Nice to be here. We met you at Challenge Miami last year. And yeah. so what have you been up to? Um, you got a little racing in this year? Yeah. Some traveling. racing, some traveling, um, so lots of training. <laughs> lots of training. <laughs> lots of working. <laughs> and so you're former Division One runner, ran yeah. at Boston College, um, two times at uh, Ironman World, six times at... 70.3 worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And, but you came from more after gymnastics? It, it just, bad, you were, you got in the running, high school, after gymnastics, basketball, field hockey, and tennis. So you had a lot of sports to yes, choose from. I did. <laughs> How did all those sports help you with triathlon? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think each one helped me in a different way. Okay. Um, the gymnastics was when I was younger, but I definitely learned like kind of that individual pushing myself uh -huh. um, and I think it just the amount of strength that you develop as a young gymnast helped right. core strength and all of that. Um, basketball was just fun um, <laughs> so it helped me learn how to enjoy sports yes. um, definitely I wasn't the best at it um, and I think that was a good thing because then I learned just like to go out there and have fun and do my best and right. Um, Field hockey, my field hockey coach in high school was amazing, um, and she really drove all of, like, the athletic mentality mm -hmm. into us. So um, we had, like, a poem that we had to recite before every race that was really? about, like, what you thought, like, having positive thoughts and thinking, um, mm -hmm. being focused and all of that. Um, so, yeah, she was, she was hardcore, but she was very, like, I think I owe a lot of my... Right. Athletic mindset to her, along with my uh, high school track coaches as well. They were awesome. Um, and what led to triathlon? Um, so I was always a runner. Well, I, I got into running actually because I didn't make the tennis team in high school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Figured I better get fitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, no, I was running to make the tennis team, and then I didn't make the tennis oh. team. Oh. And the, the coach used to have us, like, um, chase him as part of the, like, he would dodge around the school, and we'd have to follow him, and um, he would brag that no one could ever stay with him. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I made it my mission to stay with him because I was, you know, a young feminist, right. and I'm going to show this guy that girls yes. can beat him. So I beat him on the run, um, but then didn't make the tennis team. Uh, <laughs> so he wasn't very he's happy. He's like, go do track and field. <laughs> so that is funny. Came from running, and then um, just it, I always was interested in triathlon because yeah. I saw like Kona on TV. Oh, and, yeah. Um, then uh, the coach of the – when I was living down in, in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic um, – the coach of the men's national team down there saw me running one day and he's like, Hey, why don't you come join us? Um, we'd love to start a women's team. And, right. uh, so I started training with the guys, the male national team yeah. in the DR. Um, and it was just so much fun and they're all great people. And, um, from there, that's yes, um, here today. So what was yeah. your first triathlon? Um, it was a triathlon in the DR. Yeah. Um, one of my friends lent me her bike. I didn't have anything. Right. It was just like a small a race. They were, um, they were doing it as kind of like a practice race for mm -hmm. Central American games for an yep. ITU circuit. Um, so yeah, it was just like a small local race. Um, it was a sprint and yeah, it was very, I was well trained, but equipment wise had nothing. Yes. So, <laughs> so how do you go from that to becoming a pro? Um, <laughs> I trained, so I think I was really lucky in that sense that I kind of got thrown into the sport. Like mm -hmm. the coach treated me the same as all of the guys. Sure. Like if they were swimming 5k, I hadn't swam more than maybe like a mile in right. my entire life. Um, if they were swimming 5k, I had to swim 5k. If they were biking the, across the country, I had to bike across the country with that. Like it, there wasn't, um, 
I was always treated as you were an elite part of the athlete, team, even right. though I was not. Um, yes. <laughs> at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, having that as my initiation into triathlon yeah. um, made you tough. Me have that mindset that maybe someday I could be elite. Um, yes. And then lots of lots of uh, half Ironman and full Ironmans later, I decided to move up. <laughs> yeah, then move up, become pro. And what, did you, was that just in the last couple of years, become a pro? Uh, this is my fourth year. Fourth year as a pro. Yeah. And, and what has been the learning from that? You know, when you first race as a pro, how hard was that? It was very intimidating. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I was all of a sudden lining up against these women, like, who I, I remember, like, Heather Jackson and Rennie. Like, yes. it, when I first got into the sport, they were like, oh, like, these... They're gods. Yes. yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These women are amazing. How do they do this? Um, so all of a sudden, like, being next to them on the line was definitely intimidating. But they're all such amazing people, too, and so welcoming that yes. it was um, it was really cool, a really cool experience, albeit intimidating and very... Uh, <laughs> well, what do you feel has been your, your best race so far? Um, probably... Oh, that's a tough one. Um, best in terms of best experience? Best or? Uh, maybe the one that meant the most to you. It told you, okay, I could be good at this. Uh, something like that. Is there a race that was really sort of a, a turning point for you? I think my, luckily, my, <laughs> my um, well, as a, as a pro, my second race as a pro um, uh -huh. that I did in Peru. Yes. Um, so it was an Ironman 70.3 Peru, and I like had come from two weeks prior, did Oceanside, and it just went terribly. Like one of my worst times. One of and it was my first pro race at Oceanside, um, so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go out there and do it. Like there's no way I'm gonna get podium or anything. So I'm just gonna go have a good race, do my best. Right. Um, and then I ended up like I did. I missed the podium, like the champagne bottles and everything because I didn't go to it because I was <laughs> oh, so you would have been you were on podium but I you, was on the podium yes but, but I wasn't there. in the pictures no because <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting to be right. after how Oceanside went especially I was like oh no there's no way yeah. um but I, w I was trying I had some friends there um from the Dominican Republic yeah. that I was also trying to beat Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> so I was like really pushing myself um, and I just didn't expect to be on the podium. So it was like an unexpected podium yeah. and kind of made me realize, oh, maybe it could. Maybe it could be good at this. Yeah. That's right. So what, when you did Challenge Miami last year, this is, these are different type of races because you're basically in the aero bars the entire time and it's just all power. What, what did you take away from that that may, may help you this year here at uh, Daytona? Um, well, I... I actually really like the just kind of like tuck just, your head and yeah, just go. go. Um, but I think, I guess what I took from Challenge Miami is that, um, I don't know, I guess it's, it's just an amazing environment to be in. Yes. Um, so I think the energy is something that's very different from a lot of races. Right. Um, so I guess being able to use that as positive energy and uh -huh. not like nervous energy of people watching you, um, that was definitely one of my takeaways from there is just like feeling how positive and energetic and excited everyone was to see you out there. And um, even though it was so many laps, it just right. felt like you don't even notice laps going by because you like there are people out there yeah. cheering for you every single right. time. And yeah, I Very think cool. that's the energy is my takeaway. What's your, what's your goal here? <laughs> Um, to enjoy the whole event, um, I think it feels almost like Bill and, um, Brittany and Belinda team, and everyone yeah. who helps organize this it just are so kind and, um, it feels like you're coming to see family almost. Right. So, um, first of all, to enjoy and then, um, push myself as best as, as best you can fast as I can, um, whatever that is <laughs> on race day. <laughs> uh -huh. And then what will your goals be for next year as we move into hopefully a more of a normal season? Uh, um, well, in triathlon, I have a lot of goals to try and make it a little more inclusive and accessible mm -hmm. to everyone. Yeah. Um, in terms of personal goals, next year I turn 40. So ah. uh, <laughs> like prove that 
at 40, you can still make progress um, yes. and get faster. and Faster at 40. Nothing wrong with that. Yes. Love it. Lizzie, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate everybody uh, hanging out with us. Again, Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt, and we will be right back.